The Russian-American scientist and mathematician Igor Ansov is known as the founder of strategic management. He was called the father of strategic management and is famous for his theory of growth. The Ansov matrix is a strategic planning tool that provides a framework to help managers assess the differing degrees of risk associated with moving their organization forward. Ansos' theory of growth is interesting as most companies have targets for annual growth. Ansoff's product market growth matrix suggests that a business's attempts to grow depend on whether it markets new or existing products in new or existing markets. The model has two main divisions. One of these is product. The second is market. Each of these two broad divisions has two subcategories. The first, product, is also sometimes called service. Here a firm can sell existing products or new products. The two divisions of market are existing markets or new markets. These two by two categories create a model with four growth strategies. These are market penetration, market development, product development, and diversification. Each growth strategy is reviewed in the following sections. The first is market penetration strategy in which a firm sets out to increase market share within existing market segments. This can be achieved by selling more products and services to established customers or by finding new customers within existing markets. With this strategy, the company aims to increase market share, increasing product share and increasing quantity used. This is the most frequently used strategy and can be achieved by more aggressive promotion, increased promotion, finding new applications and by giving special offers, for example, buy two for the price of one. This is often seen in products such as sweets and chocolate. The second is the market development strategy which means that the firm enters new markets with existing products. The firm tries to expand into new markets using its existing offerings and products. Market research and further segmentation of markets help to identify new groups of customers. This can be in the same geographical area, in new areas or regions of the country, and by entering foreign countries. Market development can be achieved by finding new segments, for instance, industrial buyers for a product that was previously sold only to consumers, new areas or regions of the country, new geographical markets, for example, by exporting the product to a new country, different pricing policies to attract different customers or create new market segments. This strategy is more likely to be successful where the new market is not too different from the one the firm has experience of. Market development is a more risky strategy than market penetration because the firm is targeting new markets. In the third field, we have product development strategy. The firm develops new products and services for existing markets. Product development involves thinking about how new products can fulfill customers' needs better than the competition and thereby outperform the products of the competitors. Product development strategy can be accomplished by investment in research and development of additional products, 
improving existing products by incremental innovation, such as product improvements and product line extensions, obtaining the rights to produce another company's product, detailed insights into customers' needs and how they change, being first to market. Now we shall review diversification strategy, which concerns the development of new products for new markets. And this is the most risky strategy of the four strategies. The more the organization moves away from its core business, the more uncertainties are created. However, diversification can help to spread the risk if existing activities are threatened. There are two ways of diversification, concentric diversification and conglomerate diversification. By concentric diversification, also called related diversification, the company introduces new products to new markets. In this strategy, the new products have something in common with the other products within the product range. It can be in relation to production or sector, and therefore there is a potential synergy between the firm's existing business and the new product market space. Conglomerate diversification, also called unrelated diversification, is a strategy for company growth through starting up or acquiring businesses outside the company's current products and markets. The company enters new business areas that do not overlap with existing products. It is a completely new area with another industry and other competitors. This is the most risky of all strategies. When we look at the four strategies, it is obvious that the market penetration strategy is the least risky as the company tries to sell more of the same products to the same customers. Diversification is the most risky because the firm is trying to sell new products to new types of customers at the same time. On the other hand, by taking the greatest risk, the firm has the opportunity for the greatest reward. The arrow shows the incremental increase in risk offered by the five strategies with each step beyond market penetration due to the growing cost and uncertainty of operating in new markets and industries. Let us look at some examples of how the ANSOF strategies have been used. Generally, Market penetration is widely used. The American soft drinks company Coca-Cola has a large variety of TV commercials in many markets and countries for the purpose of increasing both market and product share. They have intensive distribution and thereby use their distribution channels in their market penetration strategy. The launch of Coke Zero in 2005 was a classic example of market development, its concept being identical to Diet Coke, the great taste of Coca-Cola, but with zero sugar and low calories. Diet Coke was launched more than 30 years ago and appeals to many females who drink it every day. Coke Zero is a product for men with its shiny black can, and has successfully generated a more masculine appeal. The Coca-Cola company has focused on product development strategy for growth by developing new products like new flavours of Coca-Cola. An example of this was the launch of Cherry Coke in 1985. Coca-Cola's first extension beyond its original recipe. The company has since gone on to successfully launch other flavoured variants, including lime, lemon and vanilla. From time to time, Coca-Cola introduces new sizes and new shapes of bottles. The latest trends in health 
have led the Coca-Cola company into diversification strategies. As consumer preference shifts towards healthier beverages, growth in carbonated soft drinks slows. Thus, Coca-Cola is diversifying its portfolio to establish presences in other and healthier beverages and has also launched its flavoured milk brand, Vio, in India. In India, milk is the most popular drink. Coca-Cola is also heavily investing in Africa to acquire new markets and segments in that region of the world. Now we shall present a criticism of the model. And soft growth strategies have a number of advantages for business. It forces market planners and management to think about the expected risks of moving in a certain direction and focuses the business. Among the disadvantages are that the model does not take into account the activities of external competitors and there is a risk of paralysis by analysis. In the Harvard Business Review, there have been articles over many years with a debate between Ansoff and Henry Mintzberg over their differing views of strategy. Ansoff has often been criticised by Mintzberg, who disliked the idea of strategy being devised from planning supported by analytical techniques.